What if, what if accomplishing what we desire in our wildest dreams, what if that's actually closer to us than we realized? What if everything that people have been putting on you, your parents, your teachers, your bosses, all of these people, what if what you've been given is the most difficult way of getting there? We're going to be talking today about uncovering your gifts. Every single one of us has been given a unique set of gifts and talents and abilities that when applied to the right opportunity, produce results with very little effort, with joy, with, without the heartburn. You have that and I have that. But before I talk to you about that, I want to talk to you about this guy's story. We have to go into Rudy Rudiger. If you've ever seen the movie Rudy, it's actually true. There was someone who was too small, not talented enough to play on the Notre Dame football team, but he had determination. And because of that determination, he showed up to practice after practice after practice as a walk-on, as a scrub. Of course, he was treated poorly. He was beat up. He was a tackle dummy. He was the towel boy. He was really put into the lowest of low places. But his effort did not allow him to quit. Never quit. Never quit. Never quit. That was the message that, that Rudy embraced and really is the, he's the flagship of, right? We, we look at that and we say, never give up, never quit. And think of, think of Rudy. And he did go through this career where it was, it was, it was difficult. And, and at the end of what it was there at the, on the very last day of the very, on, on his senior season, the very last game, the crowd really did chant. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. And the coach put him in. And he really did make a play. He made a tackle. He sacked the quarterback on the last play of the last game of his season. That inspires us, right? It makes us think of all of the great things that we can do. And we say things like, you can do anything you put your mind to. Hustle, grind, never give up, never stop. This is the way. Have you ever thought about what he went through? Actually, I, I'm just going to put it to you this way. That was an incredibly ineffective career. All of the practice, all of the beatings, all of the getting beat up, all of the the, the waking up, all of the diet stuff, all of the working out, all of that to make one tackle. One tackle. Listen, I'm not going to deny that the gift of determination is a gift. But sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes that bit of pull yourself up by the bootstraps and stick to it because that, that American can-do attitude causes us to look past the truth. This guy was never going to be a football player. And the truth is, had Rudy put his energies into other places, he might have found more success. Success begets joy. Joy causes you to do the thing more. And because you do it more, you're more successful. And when we live from our gifts we tend to have lives of, of joy, of health, of beauty, of proliferation. But no, Donnie, no, we can, we can do anything we set our minds to. I watch all of this stuff. You know, um, here, here's another guy. Michael Jordan, best ever. Um, listen, if we're being real, he just is, right? He was amazing, never quit mindset. Stay on it, Urgh, lock in and go. And, and 
But Michael Jordan wasn't the Michael Jordan of baseball. He tried baseball. It wasn't his gift. He tried golf. I'm sure he was great at golf. Not his gift. Let me tell you the story of another man. And it's, it's, it's fun to look at these stories. And, and I hope that you see yourself in, in this somewhere. And if it's in one of the, these first, you know, the first one, maybe, maybe we can quit and, and move on and move into something that is, is more empowering. So at the age of 16, uh, this young man decided he wanted to, he wanted to sign up for the army. He had, he lied about his age, went into uh, World War I. And um, was he was discharged a year, year and a half later, and um, and came back and he, he had to earn a living. It was an honorable discharge. Came back, had to earn a living. Um, he started working and selling life insurance. As a life insurance salesman, well, he wasn't great. He got fired. After that, he opened um, and, and was a part of a, a boating company, a ferry company, where they would, they would pull boats from one place to another. Too long into that. He crashed a ferry. Done. Um, after that, he started working in a service station. And as he was in the service station at the age of 40, he decided he would start cooking chicken. And people liked it. It was really good. People started coming to the service station until the service station burnt down. And there was also some sort of uh, shootout, a duel to the death with someone it was like there's like some competition, all kinds of weird things were happening. But this guy started finding his gift. He didn't know what to do with it. He opened a motel. And as he opened the motel, um, things were going okay. He he put away the chicken thing for a little while to try to make this thing thrive, but it it, it couldn't. As a matter of fact, uh, World War II caused it to shut down. Now... Finally, in uh, the later part of his life, he decided, you know what? There's one good thing I do have. It's this recipe. It's my secret recipe. It's the Colonel's recipe. And so in the later part of his life, I don't actually know what age it started catching on. Colonel Sanders, his legend, his myth, his success, took root and it grew. His gift was the recipe. Your gift is something that no one can take from you. Your gift is something that will always exist. Your gift is not relegated just to professional skills and the things that you do well professionally, necessarily. We're going to be talking about that. But what I wanted to do before we, before we even go into how to find your professional gift is I wanted to say, like, listen, you can't be anything that you want to be. Maybe you can, but you're more likely to find success when you look for your purpose in your design and the fingerprints of your creator on your life. And I'm going to give you a few lenses so that you can examine that gift so that you don't spend a lifetime like Rudy ineffectively chasing something that you never can really get to. Wouldn't it be better instead to go after that which you were made for? Uh, there's a story of a scorpion and a toad, and the scorpion said to the toad, will you give me a ride across the water? And the toad says, no way, you're going to, you're going to sting me. Oh, you're going you're gonna to get on my back and you're going to sting me and, and, and kill me. And the scorpion says, no, 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 I won't. But I'm, it would kill us both. Oh, we would sink and I would drown along with you. The toad says, you know, I guess that makes sense. So the scorpion hops on his back and they're swimming across the pond. And about halfway across, the scorpion stings the toad. They both sink and they do die. Your gift is going to come out of you. If you've been hiding it, if you've been ignoring it, it is going to be like a beach ball that you're trying to hold under the water. It's going to pop up. As a matter of fact, it's been popping up all of your life. And so I'm going to give you a few lenses 
for you to look at and to say, okay, well, well, what's the gift? What is the talent that I can bring that actually makes a difference in this world? The very first thing I'm going to tell you about your gift is it is here to serve others. It is here to connect heaven to earth. It is here. There, there is, there's a joy when you're exercising that gift. And it's something that rather than us having to discover it as though it's out in the unknown, really more likely we're going to be uncovering it. We're going to look to the past. We're going to look to the things that, that you've always known to be true. Maybe we're going to magnify some of that a little bit for you. But the goal is, is that you're not, um, you're not pursuing passion without success and you're not having success without passion, but you are a professional who gets to have both of those things at the same time. So what is, what is a gift? Quite simply, your gift, a gift is something that is, it, it is a plus. It is, it is something that, that you have to serve others. It's something that is, um, it adds to the volume and when connected with your belief in your people, it, it creates something. Your gift is the easiest way for you to create the results that you want. I'm going to give you a few lenses for your gift. Now, first off, um, personality wise, if you've, if you've gone through the test, if you haven't, you need to, if you haven't done it in a while, you need to, it's at the bottom of the website, schoolofprofessionaldesign.com. It's that bottom link. Um, go ahead and take that. But let's look at just a few things that are innate to um, just the gift that people bring, but the, I'll, I'll give you a few lenses, but let's just, let's start here with the personalities. All right. If you are the, the creator or, or the artist, um, that is one of those gifts that you bring. You, you have imagination, right? That you, that is, that's a part of your gift. And sometimes it's, it's, um, what would you call that? <laughs> I think the I think some people might call it manifestation, but in the world of like like my definition of manifestation is when you take something that's imagined and you make it concrete. So creators, artists, you're good at making uh, the um, the imagination concrete. Uh, shaman, if you are a shaman, you typically have the gift of vision. You see things that are not as though they were, and and then there is the optimist or the innocent. You have the gift of belief. These three, I've, I've, I, I, I keep these people. Um, I, I've created what I call four essential personalities. We'll be rolling this out later, but um, the four essentials are the visionaries, the strategists, the unifiers, and the pioneers. And each of these has three of those personality types within it. So we just went through the visionary um, personality group. Uh, the next group is going to be your strategists, and that's your that's your ruler, hero, and sage. And if you're if you're a ruler, your gift that you typically bring now again, this is very broad. These things can get very very finite and and, and refined. But a ruler typically brings the gift of bossiness, like you, in a good way. You can you can boss and, and and not feel weird about it. You know the way. You see what to do. You see the way to fix things. Heroes, uh, you bring the gift of fearlessness, fearless confrontation. Um, you, you don't mind it. The sage, you usually typically bring the gift of knowledge or teaching. And so you are, uh, or research. So those are, those are typical. Those are, these are gifts, by the way. These are things that other people don't find as easy as you do. The lover you find, um, the, the next group is unifiers. That's the lover, the everyman, and the caregiver. And so the lover, you typically are going to, you have the gift of connecting with others and in pursuing others. The everyman, you have the gift of relatability, of, yeah, just, just like bringing bringing equality. It's like a tip or sometimes it's hard work, hard work, relatability. 
caregiver, you have you have the typically the gift of healing. You are the you are a healer type of a of a person. Pioneers again. This is very we're staying general, and you're you're going to land in a few of these pioneers. It's the jester, the explorer, and the rebel. These typically um, you typically have the gift of of newness, of finding new things. Okay, of being distracted. It's that you're probably these people are all probably ADD, um, so to speak. But that's not really true. That's the gift. It's the gift of being able to watch multiple things, see multiple things at multiple, you know, at the same time. The gesture, you bring fun. That's a part of your gift. The explorer, new options. And the rebel. The rebel, you, you, you <laughs> it's it's the it's the questioning of authority. It is the different way. It's that ultimate uniqueness and authenticity. And actually, um, so so those are those are the, those are the pioneers. And so each of these, each personality comes with its own inherent gift. And so a gift isn't only what you do with your hands. It it starts out with who you who you are as an individual, and from who you are. Then it comes to how how is it? What are what are the problems you solve? What are the what are the things that are naturally within your range? And, and of course, skills develop from that. It also has to do with the way that you relate to people. Right? Some people are we we like to teach people. Other people like to heal people. Some people like to lead people. There's like there's multiple ways that we can bring a gift to another. And again, a gift is not meant for you. The gift is how do you show up for others. A lot of people, when they look at their strengths, they're trying to say, well, how do I get um, better? How do I get more by using my gift? And that, I think that's okay. I, I want that too. I think we all do. But really we have to, rather than saying, how can I serve myself with this gift is how can I serve others better with this gift? And, and, and we, will, we will find the answers of our abundance on the other side of that. Here's a, a, a few ways that, that I want you um, to translate and, and find that gift. Uh, I like to look at the things that you start and the things that you finish. So if you know the things that you start and the things that you finish, those are great revealers of the gift. For instance, some people love uh, to to pick up books. They, 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 have the, they have the gift of finding knowledge, but they might not finish them. So they, this is probably that explorer mixed with the sage. They're, they're looking for knowledge, but it's always new. Some people have an easy time um, starting new relationships. Some people have an easy time uh, starting, you know, and, and looking into new problems, starting a new website, starting a new... So when you find the things that you typically are easy for you to start, it shows a curiosity. And a curiosity is one of those DNA markers, one of those fingerprints that's on you that shows like, there's a drive for this. There's a drive for this. And that's sometimes that's for others, sometimes that's for yourself, but it's just it's just there. And that's up that's one of those beach balls that if you if you put it away, it's just gonna pop up. So what are the what are the things that you're curious about? What are the things that you start easily? Another one is what really it's this is this can have to do with skills, but I'm gonna call it performance. And performance and the actual original root of the word just means that which you finish. So whatever it is that you finish easily, that is an indicator of a gift. Now, some people really have the gift of they just finish a lot of things. And so you could be the Rudy Rudiger where you're like, I have determination. I might not have the physical traits of whatever, but I have determination and that's great. I think that's a, it is a gift if you're careful. Um, I know finishing a book, starting a book was really easy. I have, I have probably six or seven other books that are started. Finishing a book for me was difficult. Okay. Um, sometimes the complexity comes because you haven't seen it done before. And other times it comes because we just don't really have the true passion to carry something from beginning to end. So what you start and what you finish show you a part of uh, what could grow. Gifts tend to grow easier, faster, effortlessly, 
They're used effortlessly. They grow effortlessly. It's the thing that, and I'm not saying there's no hard work or sweat. It's just the thing that you, you can't put down. You can't not do. Uh, one of our sons is into, he's doing trading and, and crypto and all of these things. And so far, I think in the last, I, like he is, and he's, he is into it. And I think he's at, I don't know, he's made some money, not, not, you know, not like crazy, I'm, I'm rich money, but he's, he wants to figure this out. He just can't put it down. And so part of it is he has the, the, the gift of, of, of determination. Part of it is, um, he has a genuine curiosity. So that's a revealer of a gift. Here's another one. What is your communication? And by communication, I, I, I mean language, but I mean, I mean it literally, but really more, I mean figuratively, but let's go literal for a second. Our language is easy for you. If they are, you know, that, that speaks a lot to the fact that you, you are an idea bringer from one thing to another, you're a connector of cultures. But if, if you're not a language person, you don't speak a lot of languages. I want to, I want to go beyond English, Spanish, German. Like I want to go beyond what we know as language and there, there are languages that are spoken and, and understood. Some people know, um, they know when someone is, um, confident, like with like, they, they, they see, they see confidence. Other people understand when, when people are caring, we speak the language of care. Other people, there's, there's things that we were able to share and we're able to understand better than other people. That one is a little bit, um, I, I will, I'll, I'll unpack that one a little bit later. I think for my own self, before I dig into it, I just know this. I know that, um, some people speak music as though it were a language. Some people are able to read people and it's, that's a, that's a communication. They're able to translate what they're seeing into something that is information we can take action from. Okay. Here, here are some other things that are gifts. Outlook. Is it, is it optimistic or pessimistic? They're both okay, right? I prefer optimism. I think a lot of us reward optimism, but pessimism sometimes can be the person that sees the problem. Do you not think that's a gift? It is a gift. So your outlook, that's a gift. And I don't mean the one you're trying to have, even though I do, I do believe in shifting your mind into something that's helpful. I mean, the one that's just natural to you. Why can't we take our enoughness sometimes from what already is rather than trying to become something different? Then we have uh, skills. What are the skills that you picked up? And some of these have come to you quickly and naturally. And I want you to think about that. What are the skills that you've developed? And it just was easy for you. For me, it was teaching. Teaching was, it, it just like, ah, it just made sense. Coaching, it just made sense. A uh, video just makes sense. Just makes sense to me. I guess that connects with the communication, the language thing from earlier. But what, what are the things, that, what are the skills you've done that just make sense? I have an uncle. He doesn't like to talk but he can, he can fix anything. One of my brothers is that way. Another one of my brothers, he can like animals, like he's just genius with animals. I'm not. So there are skills that you've developed and that have come easy. Others are more likely like a, a good chunk of them, at least 30% of the skills you have for most of us, sometimes all of the skills that we really have, have come because we have tried to get better to serve people. We have grown as a professional and we've taken this thing into um, into the, into the marketplace. And we said, well, I don't know what I'm good at, but this company hired me and they hired me to telemarket. I worked at this company where we had a bunch of telemarketing, it was all telemarketing. And I saw people who were there for 10 to 15 to 20 years. And it was interesting that they didn't realize they had skills outside of what was there, but the only skill they knew they had was telemarketing. And that's a great skill, but that's made up of other sub skills. But these people uh, got good at something they had to get good at. And maybe that's you. And that's okay. I want to look at the things that you are good at, but there's some of those things that you wish you didn't have to do all the time. You're good at it, but you wish you didn't have to be. So that's not a gift or a talent. That's just, that's, that's something you've cultivated, but that's not something that's ingenious or innate connected with your actual, you know, 
the place where you flow from. Um, I, I want to know also what actions are easy for you to take? Is it easy for you to take action um, to go find new people? Is it easy to take action towards research? Is it easy to take action towards play? Is it easy to take action towards um, uh, uh, conflict? Are you are you willing to make something new? Are is it easy? Like what are what are the things that are easy for you to take action towards? That's a revealer of your gift. All right, I believe that we are all here to um, to love and be loved. Uh, we are all here to um, to serve other people to add value to other people, and we're all here to create. So now that's my next question for you. What, when you create something, what is it that you create? Do you write? That's a, that's a form of creation. And, by, and I want to go out of like the, the typical creative arts where it's like, it's writing, it's painting, it's music, it's singing, and it's acting. Like, it's like, those are great things. Yes. But creativity goes way beyond, way beyond entertainment. Creativity goes into the place of we see something done and we innovate it. We make something new. So what's the new thing that you create? What is it? Is it a new way of, um, I, I, our granddaughter turned um, two just a couple of weeks ago, and I made a book using AI in my voice and, and a website and all of those things. Those are some of those things that like, I just cre I created something that was a story that was hidden in technology. Maybe technology is one of those things for you. But what are the things that you tend to create? Maybe you create businesses. My wife, she thinks in terms of businesses. She dreams in terms of businesses. Her mind is in, is like, that's like her language is business and business ideas. And, and she comes up with a, a, a brilliant business idea about once every other month, like, like could, could change the world type of a business. But she's not necessarily the person to strategize and to go execute and to go do. And so it's just interesting. That's just where, when, when you're left alone, what does your brain want to make? Were you an artist? Were you a, uh, someone who would draw or paint or make music or websites or graphics or um, ideas or th this, there's no limit to what creativity can be. But what, what's your form of it? You are creative. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Here's another one. What are the areas of how, like where you adapt, where you're adaptable? So something comes at you and you're like, ah, oh, that's easy, no problem, right? Maybe if you were put into a situation to where you were volunteering for something and someone dropped a giant food order, I'm just like, you know, again, a different situation than your current works, your workspace and you're in a place and someone asks you to memorize a hundred things, maybe that's easy for you. Or maybe you're in another place to where, you know, um, I don't know, you, you, if you lost a job, you would, you would find out what to do. There's an adaptability there. Or um, if, if one of your children or someone that you see, there's, there's, um, there's an emergency, a medical emergency, and you have cool, a cool head in the midst of, of difficulty, where are the areas where you find yourself able to adapt when maybe others can't? Okay. What about, what about people? What about, what about how you deal with people? You, you. You teach them, you listen to them, you help them, you heal them, you lead them, you tell them what to do, you fight for them. You Like, that's a gift. So all of these things, all of these things, guys, are, these are lenses. And as I'm going through what I'm going through here, my hope is only to illuminate. You know, I, I, wait, I need to get like a lantern. Okay, here I am. Let's just imagine this is, this is a light because this is actually what these were, right? This is, you pour the oil in. And then you, you light the end of it. This isn't genies weren't what came out. It was a flame that would come out of these things. And so, so imagine you have this, this light and that's what I am. I'm, I'm the light. I'm illuminating some things. And my goal is, is to make you think. I want you to think. I want you to look. And I'm going to give you some action to take. 
that can help you to further clarify these. Because it's important. Because if you don't play from your gifts, you will be Rudy Rudiger. And by the way, he's got a great career. <laughs> he's a motivational speaker. And I uh, we share a middle name. So if you find Rudy Rudiger's middle name, you'll know my middle name. Um, his first name isn't really Rudy, by the way. It's Daniel. But let's not let's not be the professionals that do that. Rudy had a belief, but he didn't have the ability. Let's 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 put our belief and our love in what we say into what we do very well. That's called a profession. And a profession, a professional with a purpose, a professional playing by design is someone who understands their gifts. And so this is something you need to know. If you think you know what those are, uh, I'd love for you to interact with me. Let me know what those are and, 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 and look and say, how can, I, how can I engage those more? How can I engage these gifts more in what I'm doing? If you can take those gifts and use them for other people more, find a way to solve problems. Maybe you haven't even looked at other problems. Like maybe you've just been in a rut and you've just been doing things over and over and over again the same way. I want you to look again at the people you're serving and at the problems they have and ask yourself, is there a gift that I have that can help with that? Can, can you be an illuminator for those people? Can you bring light in an area where, where they might be feeling it? When, when my father was in the process of, of passing away and it was that last year. So was, I, I would always visit. One of the things that I embraced was the role of bringing light, lightness and joy. Brought lightness and joy. We didn't always look at all of the medical records and what needs, like one of my, my, one of my other brothers did. Thank God that was the gift he brought. I brought the gift of bringing lightness and joy into the situation. That was what was needed. That was what I had. What do you have that you can offer to help solve some of the problems of the people around you? If you've gotten to this point, I hope that some of these things have become, you're considering them. If you've gotten to this point and you're still like, I don't know, I don't know my gifts. I don't know those. Well, then I'm going to ask you, um, I will give you a challenge that will help you to, to look and to ask. And, and actually, I'll tell you what, one of those is gonna be, you could reach out to people via text message, like right now, literally ask them. I was working with a client yesterday and she sent this text message to people, and this isn't a business. Um, let's see, here she is. Here is the text message I had her send out to people. And she did, and she got immediate feedback that immediately helped her. She just copied and pasted what I sent to her. Uh, here it is. Hi, my friend. I was hoping you could help me out. My coach asked me to get feedback from a couple of people, and you were the first person I thought of. If you could answer any or all of, the, of these questions, that would be super helpful. What do you think I do better than anyone else in the world? What do you think I am best at? What do you think are my unfair advantages in business? Now, I ask that um, right now in, in, in the direction of business and profession, because this is School of Professional Design, but you can ask that personally. You can ask that from your friends, ask that from your clients, take that and send that to four people. I'll, send, I'll put the, me you know what, here, I'll put that message right here. And so you will have that. You can copy and paste it if you want to into uh, into a text message here we go everyone all right i just put that into um into the lesson you can grab it use it okay uh books that you can read uh, there are two that i can recommend one is called working genius um i can't remember it's from sorry i can't remember his name right now i see his face uh leon choney patrick leon choney and the other one is the uh, the Clifton Strengths Finder 2.0. That, that one gets a little bit redundant after a time. Also look back at your personality quiz results and look in that and say, and, and let, even separate yourself a little bit from like, okay, 
it says that I'm a, I'm a hero and uh, a sage. What are the strengths of the hero? What are the strengths of the sage? Is that true about me? How is it true about me? And, and getting finite about it, getting very defined about it can really help you. So that is, that's the beginning of, of my, my push to power. Take your power, put it into play, take your gift, bring it to where you're going. If you want to win, play as yourself. All right. Uh, we're going to be digging into this even, even farther, but um, in the upcoming lessons, we're going to be talking about who does that matter to? That's your people. What problems should you be solving? Like that's your, that's your puzzle. That's your problem. What is the pattern that you work in with all of this? Because there is a recipe that's going to work for you that might not work for other people. And who knows? You're going, I know, you do have your version of what Colonel Sanders brought into the world. You do have a secret recipe and we can start putting that together.